Go answer it. Don't answer the question. It's just a rhetorical question. I want you to think about it. Everybody say integrity. Now look at integrity and look at integrate. They're the same word. Integrity means you are one with yourself. Integrity means that you are one with yourself. Do you know when I did some research some years ago on the word in the Hebrew for holiness, write the word holy down, I discovered that the root word for holy is one. One. The Hebrew concept of holiness is integrity. One. That means you are one. The number one confession in the Bible about God is the Lord our God. Is one. Now some of you don't understand why that's important. If you were to talk to a Jewish rabbi right now in this city and ask him, when you meet them, ask him, when you see them, ask him, what is the most important confession in the Bible? They will tell you, the Lord our God is one. What does it mean? It means he's holy. What is holy? You are one. This is very interesting. Holiness means you are integrated. You are not more than one person. <laughs> you are not a different person on Monday that you are on Tuesday. You are not a different person in the night at 2 a.m. than you are in the pulpit on Sunday morning. You, you are one. You are not multi-personality. When the Bible says be holy, it's telling you be one. Stop being a hypocrite. It's character. The foundation for trust is integrity. Write it down. Tweet that to somebody right now. What did I say? The foundation of trust is integrity. When you are one, people will eventually trust you. That means your word is always good. You say what you said, you do what you said, and then you act what you said. That's holiness. So wearing a long dress or a white collar with a purple shirt turned backward with a big chain in your pocket is not holiness. Wearing a long robe with a turban on your head doesn't impress me. I want to know if one person is under that robe, just one. <laughs> you can call me, you know, you can bring your card to me and show me all your titles. Right, Reverend, Honorable, Bishop, Eternal, sac Sacred Man of God. I don't care what you say. I still don't trust you. don't because I don't know which one of you I'm talking to that's why the Bible says know them that labor among you don't just bring anyone into your church to preach even if they are on TV attracted to charisma seek out character you know some years ago my wife and I hosted a marriage conference in our church and I met this guy when I was doing a show for the 700 club with Pat Robertson 
in Virginia Beach and I was doing a series of programs with him and the people there and I met this guy and he did a show on marriage you know and strengthening marriages this older guy and I was so impressed he had a book and everything and it sounded good I didn't know him I just met him for the first time and we were having this marriage conference in our church in the Bahamas and I said you know this guy sounds good so I approached him and I invited him to come to the Bahamas he was so excited to come to the Bahamas so he came to the Bahamas and he did the seminar with me and it was a wonderful session and everything he brought his wife with him and then two months later I saw an article where he got a divorce from the woman that was with him his wife I was confused so I, I called him up he was living in Colorado at the time and I said uh, I just want to make sure that this article I'm reading is not true uh, are you divorcing your wife who was with you when you did a seminar for my people who believed you and he began to try and explain himself I said you will never come back to our church and you will never come back to our island I hung the phone up and called the bookstore I said take every one of his books off the shelf because if what he is teaching is not working for him it shouldn't be taught to us Write this down. Lead with your life. Your life is the weight of your words. What did I say? Tweet that right now to someone. See, that's the problem with us. We, we think that we are impressed by our language, you know, these deep things we say and how good we can speak and preach and how we can, ah, hallelujah, yes, Lord. Listen, brother, you ain't got no life. <laughs> you know, it's like it's like a guy who sells diamond but he ain't wearing none mm. <laughs> never trust a salesman who don't use what he's selling <laughs> clap <laughs> I am faithful to my wife so that you could believe my words I am a good father to my children so you could believe my words let me put it this way there's no such thing as a personal life write it down There's no such thing as a private life. Write it down. So don't you ever tell people what I do in private is none of your business. It is my business. Because it determines whether I trust what you say publicly. It's called character. As a matter of fact, I have come to the conclusion that a person of character doesn't need to talk. They don't need to talk they just show up when I first met Nelson Mandela it was the most overwhelming moment in my life private dinner 16 people he had just come out of prison his first trip was to the Bahamas he wanted to meet my Prime Minister 
Sir Lyndon Penley, who was the first one to agitate for his freedom out of prison. So he wanted to come and thank my prime minister personally. So his first trip out of prison was to my country. And the prime minister called me and he invited 16 people to the dinner. And I was one of them. I don't know. That's such an honor to meet an icon. I think some of you saw the photograph of us together a couple of times. When I, when I, my God, when I saw him, I saw a character on two legs. He didn't have to speak. Do you know why? He went to prison for 18 years plus seven and never changed his conviction. Hey boys, they never change? Never change. That's why you respect him. When I come back to New York, will you have the same wife? Don't answer it. Don't answer the question. It's just a rhetorical question. I want you to think about it. This is a serious question. How stable are you? That is why the young people are so confused. You know what the Bible says about uh, parenting? The Bible says, fathers, do not exasperate your children. Now, some of you don't know what that big word means, so I'll explain it to you. The word exasperate means to frustrate because of instability. You tell your child, don't smoke, and you are smoking. You are creating a monster in your house. You tell your daughter, who is 16, don't get pregnant, and you had her out of wedlock. See, don't feel bad, I got you today. See, the problem is, your daughter could tell you, but you did it. <laughs> Everybody say, lead with your life. Lead with your life. See, your words mean nothing. Character protects your words. Write it down.